Hi everyone, welcome to part two of our planner page um, for this week um, from Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. Using Black Widow's pencils, as I mentioned yesterday, I do have conversion charts from Black Widow to Polychromos and to Prismacolor. So if you don't have the Black Widow's, you could use those to match the nearest colours. Um, if you don't have the Polys or Prismas or Black Widow's and you have other sets, um, let me know if you want a conversion chart. Things I have Castle Arts, I have Arteza, I have um, Stedler, um, other things. So just let me know and I'll see what I can do for you. But let's crack on with our page. I'm quite in the mood for doing water. I know we haven't finished the boat, but I'm going to just do the water um, to start with. Now we have a um, lots of waves and things going on. I thought I might choose a colour for the sort of base and then add some other colours in. Um, I'm thinking maybe if I grab the Everglade, it's a very bluey green, very light, um, a bit like um, a light fallow green, that sort of thing. And I thought I might go over the whole of the water with this first. So I'm going to just start that while I'm chattering. Now, although this is a green, it really does look quite bluey um, to me. Um, so that's why I'm using it. And actually, I think a blue-green is always quite a good choice for water. But when I've finished applying this um, colour, I am going to add something over the top. So don't be too hard. Don't press. Just get the intensity to a level where you can't see very much um, paper through. Um, but don't push down too hard and burnish it so your paper goes flat. It's some. Um, it's quite an art to get that exactly right, but uh, it takes practice. Um, it, uh, you can do it. So I'm just, as I say, all of it apart from the fish, even the bubbles, I'm going to colour over at this point. Um, we can uh, sort those out later, have a think about what we're doing with those. So I hope everyone's feeling good today. Um, maybe you're colouring along, maybe you're just watching. Um, it's, uh, I was just thinking about something I wrote about in my book, that, uh, you know, when we lose our mojo, or a colouring mojo, as some people call it, you know, when you f aren't quite in the mood for colouring, it can feel quite sad. You might worry that you're missing out on something that's um, potentially gives you fun, that helps you to relax and things like that. But um, worrying about not relaxing is maybe not the best way to go about it. The best thing to do is to just think of something else that you can do instead um, for now. I have a lot, I share a various different tips in my book about what you can do to try and help regain your mojo. I actually um, have only lost mine once, but I have heard of a lot of other people that have, and um, I know what helped me, and hopefully my tips might help you too. Um, but um, if you're just listening along and not colouring, that's absolutely fine. Um, there's no rule to say you have to colour along, and you may have already done this picture anyway, or you might just not be in the right place to hold a pencil at this particular time. But um, if you um, if you feel like it, you could do some other craft while you're listening, or something else that uh, that you enjoy. You know, I was think um, knitting or crocheting. If I was doing those sorts of things, I would probably watch a video alongside. I don't tend to watch many videos, to be honest. Though I go through phases. Sometimes I'm in the mood. In fact, my husband sent me a video, which I need to watch um, today. Um, so uh, I haven't watched that yet, but I've been making my own videos. I can't possibly watch a video and make a video that isn't, uh, that's not going to work. And I've been sending emails and messages and doing various bits and pieces. But um, um, I shall, uh, I was thinking maybe when I cook tonight, I might watch it while I'm cooking because I'll be on my own. Um, everyone's out um, tonight until about seven o'clock time. Or I may just... Uh, Take some time for it in a minute. We'll see. I did. I haven't quite decided about cooking. I might just throw some stuff in the oven. That sounds good. I just grab, you know, a few things and just throw them in the oven. That'll that'll work. Now I uh, I find a sort of tray baker veggies um, are really easy 
and a uh, satisfying thing to cook. Um, you know, cube up some sweet potato, put it in with some um, tinned beans. Why aren't we in the middle? Um, you know, tinned beans, like mixed beans or rum chickpeas, something like that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, I know what colour I'm looking for. Let's see if I can find it. Um, <gasps> oh, I'm yawning, I'm sorry. Aquarius. Here it is. This is another sort of turquoisey colour, but it's got a bluer look to it. Now, what I'm going to do now is deal with each of our little individual stripy bits. And I'm going to put some Aquarius at each end and then just gently fade it to the middle so we can see some of the uh, Everglade as well. Okay, I'm going to do that with every little stripe. Um, yes, and then I might put in some Brussels sprouts, some broccoli, some carrots or um, I don't know what veg I've got, peppers, mushrooms, that sort of thing, and then just pop it in the oven. And then I can just leave it alone while I get on with some work. It's just lazy, but tasty and healthy. Um, so I may do that. Just looking at the time because I have to get the oven on. I'm okay for a bit. I may have to uh, sort of go, and, go and do it in a bit. Let's see how we get on with this. Now let's do this little curl. They look like curls. I know they're sort of waves. Um, it's just seeing, mm, see this one goes quite thick, um, I think we'll just start it and see what happens, see where it leads us, oh I'm going to sneeze, oh bear with me, I'm going to switch off because I'm going to sneeze, that was a very very loud sneeze, it was very lucky that I um, was able to turn off the uh, <laughs> video, lucky it wasn't alive. Um, I'm really not sure what to do with this bit. I'm just going to put a bit to there and leave that bit. Sorry, now I sound all snuffly. I haven't got a cold or anything. I'm just, I don't know what it is. Just a sneeze. Uh, I think we'll start here. Yeah, no, one loves, no one's got colds. I saw someone out and about with a mask on today though. But uh, some people wear them because they have colds or other you know, flu or whatever and some people wear them because they don't want to catch anything either way why not very sensible I think I would do the same too if I was in either of those situations but uh, fortunately not um, all good now my son had a bit of a hay fever bout the other day um, he said he was at uni and they were stood outside I think someone was mowing grass is his something um, that he struggles with and he says his eyes were watering, he just couldn't stop sneezing. He was not, and then he was going to take a pill the next day. Oh, he asked me to buy him some, I haven't done that. <gasps> Naughty mother. Um, he said they've got about a week left and then they expire, I think, the pills. It's like they were from Wilco, which is a shop. I was like, well, that's a bit no good. They've all they've gone out of business. A lot of shops seem to be. I was in a different town the other day and their clerks had closed down, which is a shoe shop ours has as well in our town. I don't know whether they all have. I think there's a town that's got one still that I know of. Yeah. I'm only doing these thin waves. I'm sort of ignoring these larger areas. I'm not really sure what to do with those or whether I'll just continue to ignore them and see how it looks can be quite good to I suppose if you can visualize you can probably work out how it's going to look but I can't so I find that I don't always want to make a firm plan about how I'm going to color the page until I've started because I can't predict how it's going to look so uh, I don't always um, worry too much just checking for messages I have feeling that my boys might be finishing a bit early today but we'll find out it's because it's nearing um, 
end of term for them because um, I'm recording this in advance it's coming up to their Easter holidays basically and uh, they may be um, let out a little bit early for good behaviour but we'll see my one son was very cheeky earlier he's doing a course with a placement you know a business placement and he said his teacher apparently said to him oh in the old days they used to call this a sandwich course which is what's called in my day and he said apparently you're old he then said he said wasn't me that said it <laughs> he is a cheeky lad we get on so well we tease each other it's uh, good fun have a laugh why not it's uh, it's good to enjoy life and laugh if you can as much as you can but uh, I tend not to laugh so much with my husband because we've got such different sense of humour um, which is quite interesting <clears throat> We don't tend to watch the same, find the same thing, TV shows funny and things like that. But uh, he um, he likes things like um, the young ones, um, things like that. If if you're, you may know I've seen it. Um, so I prefer the sort of rom commy type thing going on. Anyway. I can all squiffing off central again here. Yeah. So uh but that's okay. I don't always have to sit and watch the same things. And my son was saying this morning actually I think him and his dad are gonna go to the cinema to see um Kung Fu Panda four. They're fans of the old Kung Kung can't say it, Kung Fu Panda series. Again, something that I'm not particularly a fan of. I mean I don't hate it. Um, but it's just not something that I would choose to watch, you know, I'd rather sit and colour. Yeah, I know you can colour and watch TV at the same time, which is sometimes what I do, but I'd rather, I find it more comfortable at my desk. Anyway, um, but he said he's getting some really bad reviews apparently, but I think they're going to go anyway. It'd be nice for him to go. I don't think he's, my son's been to the cinema for a long, long time. Okay, I am quite happy with how that's looking and I'm going to use some white pen on it in a bit. I'm going to do the fish first and then do some pen. I'm just looking at the oranges. I quite like the idea of doing orange fish. I know it's a bit of a stereotype. Now we have a selection of oranges. We have a carrot. We have a sunset. We have a whoops, a whoops, no, a burnt orange, I'm putting them in colour order, and we have a pumpkin. I'm trying to work out which one it is. That's Toad's George. I think it's that one. Yeah. Now, which is the darkest? I'm just looking, the pumpkin is the darkest. So there they are. We have four shades. I'm just going to move them aside. I'm going to start with the pumpkin. Now I tend to do this, um, do the um, fins and tail in the darkest colour. So I think the pumpkin is the darkest. If I'm wrong, it's not going to matter because um, it, it, as long as they're all the same. I want them to be consistent in their colour. Now, of course, if you want something that matches the water better, purple fish will probably be good. Or even pink. Purple's colour of Ivy's dress is probably best to avoid that. But I don't think you necessarily have to make the fish match the water. That's not how fish are. Not that they match each other either, which is what I'm going to do. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, there is the first one. Next we have carrot. This is from the skin tone set. Just seeing if I need to sharpen it. I left my sharpener next door. Never mind. I'm going to do every other stripe in this colour. Uh, I'm going to do every other row of scales. She took me a while to find the word scales. <laughs> oh, 
feeling hungry. That's good, I suppose. Seeing as I've got to cook soon. I didn't have very big lunch because I was very hungry then. Which again, I'm a big believer in listening to your body and doing what your body tells you with regards to food. Um, most of the time. If it tells you to eat to excess, then probably not. This is the burnt orange. I'm going to do the faces in this colour. Um, but uh, if you're hungry, genuinely hungry, and not thirsty, sometimes you can feel like you just want to eat something, or you can just feel thirsty. Um, you're thirsty, not hungry, so it's worth thinking about those things first. I try to. It's easier said than done. I have to agree. Sometimes you just fancy a chocolate biscuit. And there you go. Now, I don't eat um, chocolate biscuits, but I know other people do. And if you make up your mind not to do it, like me, I just don't do it. I don't get tempted. But um, I know it can be really hard. just found that I felt better not eating sugary snacks you know sugary foods at all right now we're going to do some white work and I'm going to then go off and put some food on and come back and do a little bit more um, on the same video today um, but um, it will be let the white dry so I'm going to put little white dots along all, whoops, let me hold the page along all the black lines on the water. I'm not going to do cover them up entirely. You can if you want, but I think this actually shows up better. And it just gives a bit of a different look maybe to how other people do it. And I think it's just a bit of fun. And uh, sometimes it's nice to play with something a little bit different, to try a different technique. So you can just wipe right over them. But I think then the lines will just vanish and that'll be that, which might be the effect you're looking for, but I think it's quite nice to see a bit of the line really, because then it sort of makes more sense, our sort of stripes that we've coloured in and things like that, you know, that we're working with in those lines. Yeah, I've got a very big jar of chickpeas. I think I had chickpeas yesterday, but I forgot to buy any mixed beans. Mm, I'll try and decide what to have. I'm very tempted. I've got a jar of black beans to make some refried beans, but that's too much effort for me to do just for myself, and the children absolutely love them, so... We just, we make really simple refried beans. I think you're supposed to use pinto beans. We always use black beans and we always use them and they're juiced because this sort of aquafaba, faba, sorry, is really tasty in black beans. And so we, um, these, I'm going to go around the edge and I think they might just vanish. Um, so we just um, cook them down and smush them. Um, and add cumin and lime and salt if it needs it. It depends. Often the jarred ones are quite salty. You can do it with a tin as well and just sort of mash and cook while everything else is cooking. I always fry some strips of pepper and chop some lettuce, get some avocado and then and cook some mushrooms and we just put, sort of put it all together in wraps like um, wholemeal and flatbread sort of thing. Oh, delish. One of our favourite meals. Don't know why we don't make it more often. But anyway, sometimes I make sweet potato chips to go with it as well. And wedges. I mean, I'm going to blank out this line. I don't like it. There we go. So, uh... Yeah, I won't cook that. Maybe tomorrow, but I've got a lot of veg that I need to use up. Hmm, it is a challenge. I've also got to think about, I'm taking some salads 
we're going out on Saturday. It's my mum's birthday, um, 23rd of March. So I'm uh, recording this a little bit early. Um, and uh, because it's her birthday, my sister said, let's take, um, let's take tea, meals for tea. We're having a takeout for lunch. Um, my mum always likes to cook lunch. It's her birthday, so it's fine. And uh, so I was going to make some um, of my homemade hummus, which is more like a chickpea and lemon dip, because I don't put garlic or tahini or any of the hummusy things in that I can't eat. And um, and I might make a sort of mixed salad, and maybe some new potatoes, that sort of thing. But I need to talk to my sister about what she's bringing. So that um, I don't bring the same thing, but I'm going to um, just take it all with me and then prepare it there, so it's nice and fresh and it won't take me long. I'm very quick at sort of chopping veg and stuff, so it won't take me long. I don't mind. Give me, I can go and hide in the kitchen. <laughs> Not that I need to hide when it's um, it'd just be a few family members there which should be nice. Hopefully my niece will be there for a while. My one niece should be there all the time, but the other one's working, I think. So uh, she may not be able to stay for long. Um, she works evenings in a bar, in a cocktail bar. It seems very 1980s, cocktail bars. But uh, she... Uh, I wouldn't say she likes it, but she likes the money, so uh, she does it. Sometimes I think she likes it. It depends if the boss is in and what mood everyone's in, as it tends to for most jobs, really, I think. But, um, it's... Uh, I think it's good that she's doing it in a way because it's uh, giving her a bit of money and teaching her a little bit because working is hard and just doing a little bit. It also might teach her a job that she doesn't want to do because I don't think it's going to be what she wants to do. If she's a student, she's studying art, she's doing games art, she likes doing this sort of um, characters and designing characters and things, but the problem is there's no jobs in it, so uh, it's a bit tricky. But anyway, see how she gets on. I think she's got a few plans, but I think young people do, and it often doesn't quite come to pass or they change their mind once they have various opportunities coming their way. I know I had to change my plans and it all worked out fine in the end. You know, I mean, you can't tell whether it would have been better had you not done what you did, but, uh, you know, it was okay. We all have to make our own journeys and learn life's lessons, I guess. It's uh, it be quite scary. I think I really didn't want to um, start work um, when I was at uni. I um, I went to uni because I didn't want a job. Um, luckily, I got in, and uh, I did four years in the end at uni, and then um, then I knew I had to get a job. My head was just like, right, I've got to do it. There was no choice really. And uh, I just went to a temping job, temping agency, and uh, they found me a job the next day. So that was rather good. They were taking on a lot of people in a the company. They were very happy to have um, um, graduates, even though it was a low paid job, it wasn't a graduate job. But I think they just didn't mind really having graduate temps because they could train them up and they were obviously. Um, could do the job and that sort of thing. Now I'm going to do a bit of white on these fish. I quite like um, putting a bit of shine on the fish. I'm going to put one that way on this one, just on the right. I 
think I do the same on all of them actually. You could do each of the um, scales separately, but to be honest, it's just a bit too much. I'm just going to do these bits. Now, as I said, I am going to go and prepare some food and then I will come back and do a bit more. So this isn't the end of today's video, but a little break while the pen dries. Be careful if you've used the pen and you're carrying straight on, you'll need to make sure it dries. You could always turn your back book up the other way. Okay. Right, I am now back, hoping that my white pen is nice and dry. I have been quite a while actually. And I have also been thinking of a few ideas for leaves and background but we are going to be finishing the items in the boat <laughs> so I'm going to have to wait and so are you right house mouse now I quite like doing mice in brown but we've got a lot of brown going on with our boat and our mast and she's quite close so I'm thinking it's probably sensible to do her grey um, her tail and ears I usually would do in a sort of peachy pinky colour. I'm thinking I am going to go for the Sherbert. Um, this is obviously from our skin tones. We've got quite the sort of pale peachy ones for Ivy so I think it will mean that she'll look a little bit different which is my intention. I'm going to put it on quite lightly though. I don't want her to sort of look neon pink. I'm not even entirely sure if um, mice have pink tails or if they're, I'm going to do a pink nose as well, or if they're um, furry. I think I tend to draw, you know, when I do matchstick mouse, that's how I do matchstick mouse. So I just figured I would do a similar thing. Want a little bit of shadow on that tail. Oh, I still forgot my pencil sharpener. I'm going to use a bit of washed purple just for the bottom part here. And there's just the edge, it's quite hard for you to see what I'm doing with this thick pencil. I'm just putting a bit of shadow on the underside. I'm just going to go and get my sharpener. Right, I'm back with the sharpener. I may not need it, but you know, there we go. Now, mouse. Um, greys, I always think. Now, we've got quite a, a lot of greys in our... Um, black widows we have the spider web which is I like the brownie greys um, for mice and it's all we have apart from the grey thorn in the skin tone which is the only sort of cool cold grey <gasps> excuse me so I'm going to use probably the spider web and the dim grey let's start with the spider web I think I'm just going to do a little bit all over in a light um layer and then we'll do a little a few darker areas now with her fur try and color it in the direction that it would grow so it'd be down here then down her nose like this and then if any of your coloring lines i don't know what word we use for that um can be seen it doesn't matter because they're in the direction that the fur would grow so it just looks like fur there is my initial layer i'm going to sharpen my dim gray and then add in a little bit of contrasty tone a bit of shadow i guess so here it is the dim gray and i'm thinking where is it going to be darker well under her head here is gonna her head will be creating a bit of a shadow down there and on the edge of the apron I would think there would be a bit of a shadow and then maybe here along the bottom of the ear and perhaps under here a little bit there we go so there is house mouse now her apron um, I am tempted to do it in a reddish colour um, because, hmm, actually that might not work. Let's use a pink. I think a pink might be rather nice. Is, there's a, is there a delicate pink that I could use? Um, yes, I think this fairy floss, although it looks really neony, it isn't that much. I'm going to use it gently just to check and be sure because I don't want although it might be a bit close to the tail. It's not, it's quite different to the tail actually. The tail almost looks like a dirty pink. This is a much 
brighter pink. There we go. I'm going to go inside those bows with us some more layers. And maybe just where we're near the boat. And there we go. There she is. Now you could do a pattern on her apron. You don't have to leave it plain. You could get a darker pink. Um, maybe the blood red or the burgundy and draw some stripes or um, crosshatch or something like that if you want to. But I'm going to leave it. I think it looks quite pretty pink to be honest. And now we have this building. Now I think where I'm going to start, I'm just putting my cardigan around me because I'm suddenly feeling very cold, is to put some light coming out of those little windows. That's what I think they are anyway. Um, I am going to use the Nugget, which is the Cobra set. There it is. It's quite a nice bright colour if you layer it up. Okay, now that's the door, so we'll leave that. Now we could do this any colour. I'm quite of the ilk of thinking let's just do the roof in grey like it's tiles. Hmm, would that work? I think it might. I'm going to grab the grey thorn and I'm just going to colour the whole of the roof in an even layer of grey thorn. Uh, this is quite blunt and I think it'll be okay for this purpose. In fact, sometimes it's oops, easier when you've got a big area to use a blunt pencil. It goes down quicker, which can be good. Sometimes um, it's not always good to rush, but if you've got a big area that might get a bit boring to colour, if you're doing it all the same colour like I am here, then doing it quickly can be useful. There we go. Now this isn't very well defined, so we're going to use a darker colour and I think I'm going to use the flat black if I can find it. There it is. Flat black to define it. So where these um, pieces are, I think there will be some shadow each side, so I'm just going to put that in to start with. either side of each of these. Just keeping an eye on the time so my food doesn't burn. Shouldn't do. Now each of these round bits I'd like to just do a little bit underneath. I'm going to sharpen my pencil a little more because I don't want it to be quite such a thick line as I've done for the um, the, the other like bits. So just a little bit underneath just to try and make it look like they might be overlapping a little bit like roof tiles tend to. Oh, and a little bit more here. I haven't actually coloured in that bit. I'm just using the grey thorn. There we go. And then around to the next bit. Well, do the final bit. I'm trying to think of what colour to do the actual building. I had thought about just doing it wood, but boats wood, got a lot of wood. I'm trying to remember what colour I normally do it when I colour this page, but I can't remember. So that's not much use. Um, let's do the window frames in the chalk tone. Now they're quite small so I think it's easiest to just block that in than try and do anything fancy. If I was going to do anything fancy I'd just do a bit of a darker layer around each edge just inside the black lines but it, it's barely visible when you do that. Now 
are building. I'm thinking about my plans for the rest of the picture. And I think I'm going to grab the dark tan for the main part of the building. Okay, okay that's written there from the um, scorpion set. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, just start filling that bit in. It's a little bit of a different shade to the boat here, so I think that is good. It's not the same as the masts either. We will be adding another colour on here, but I think with this base being a different colour it should all work nicely. Now the door I haven't decided on yet, but uh, I will. Now, what should we use to go with that? I think we've used most of the brown. I'm going to, I'm going to... <sighs> Sorry, I think I'm going to use the tarantula. And what I'm going to do is put a little bit on the very edge and then just fade it in. To try and give the impression that the boat is slightly rounded. But also I need some under here. I'm just going to sharpen my pencil. Some shadow and a roof where Johanna's drawn some little dots for us so we know what we're doing. So I'm going to make that a bit darker. Apparently, shed a bit of pencil while I'm at it. Let's go around there. I never know whether Johanna does do that to look like shadow or whether she just does it because she wants to. Right, let's just sweep away those um, pencil crumbs. Now the door I think I'm going to do in this colour, um, this is the brown bug. It's a bit of a sort of um, burgundy, almost magenta -y. not sure what colour, reddish? Um, I don't know. I match it to the polychromos magenta. And I'll find the Prismacolor raspberry. So I guess it is reddish. Now I want a little bit of shadow under my rope. It's all rather dark. So I think I'm going to use the flat black for that. I'm just going to put a bit here. Oops. Maybe put some lines because I think this door's wood. Look like it's painted wood. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of shadow around these. I think I already did a bit, but I don't feel like there's enough. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to make that do for today. Let's come out a little bit. Now, so we've just got left our leaves. Oops. Let's make you straight. There you go. Our leaves and our sky. Oh, should we do the flag? Actually, let's just do the flag today. Now, I know what I'm doing for my leaves and my sky. Um, yes, so flag red. I want a sort of orangey red rather than the pinky red. Hmm. I think the deep red might be the best, but they are all really quite pinky. So this is the deep red. I'm going to use it for the flag. This is from this cobra set. It's too blunt, isn't it? stars I will do those in a yellow I think. Now you can do them if you want in a, a glitter pen, a metallic pen and if they were real stars in in non quotes, you know what I mean, um, in air quotes, <laughs> I can't do it when I'm colouring, um, I might be tempted to do that because they're printed on the flag 
they're on fabric so I think they're more likely to be quite flat you know what I mean rather than shiny so um, I will uh, colour them accordingly So I want something quite bright. Now we used the nugget for the windows, so I'm not going to use that for this as well. Let's have a look at what else we've got. We've got the the banana, the egg yolk. I think the banana, I really do like the banana colour. It's a lovely vibrant yellow. I'm not doing anything spectacular apart from just layering it up so it looks nice and vibrant. There we go. Now I am happy that we are done for today. So we, we've, we've got background, we've got leaves and I've got plans for those. They could take quite a while but it just feels like if I start I'm going to have to start end one of them and there'd be quite big chunks so I am going to leave it for today I've also got to go and think about food I'm quite hungry so <laughs> I might not be um, I might be in too much of a rush so I'm going to get going for today but thank you for watching um, I hope that you have a really lovely day um, rest of your day whatever and then pop back tomorrow to see and um, we've got to do the very outside with the sky and the leaves but uh, for now, thank you so much. Please like, subscribe and comment if you can. And happy colouring.